would like to call the meeting of the Narragansett Regional School District School Committee to order, and we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. with Templeton Cable Access TV, and that uh, video is, is distributed to Templeton and Phillipston Cable Access TV. I, did, I do want to just mention an oversight um, that the Templeton Cable Access TV has been supplying us with the equipment to use and helping with some editing and things, and it's been an oversight that I haven't mentioned their help in our filming. Um, we have our own resource who does it, but we utilize their equipment, so I wanted to just shout out to Templeton Cable Access TV and say thank you. We appreciate it. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from January 30th. When someone is ready, I would entertain a motion to approve them. I make a motion we approve the minutes. I have a motion. Do I have a second? second. And I have a second. Do we have any questions or comments? Does anybody need any extra time to look at them? Okay, I'm seeing nobody saying yes. I will take a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Stained, it passes unanimously. Thank you. All right. Next up are bills and payroll. I would take a motion to recommend to accept the bills and payroll warrants as presented. So moved. I have a motion and I have a second. Any comments, questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Passes unanimous. Um, this evening, for appearances, we do not have a student rep. I know they, uh, our two reps are busy packing for their Dominican Republic service trip mm -hmm. this evening. Um, we had scheduled an outdoor adventure update for Mr. Donofrio. He couldn't make it tonight, so we will reschedule that for one of our upcoming meetings. And we also were going to recognize Mrs. Mandy Fliss with an award. She couldn't make it tonight either, so that'll be rescheduled for the next meeting. Um, ongoing business, business manager's report. I don't know if you guys have any questions, but if we <laughs> jump to the revolving accounts, there's a couple that you wanted to know recommendations mm -hmm. on what to do. The only two I have recommendation for would be the NOG revolving, which is an old account that was established when Dr. Hemmen was here, and it was all of the area school districts, they got together for professional development and there was fees that were involved and this is the leftover money. I would recommend that you allow um, our director of curriculum to use that for professional activities for our teachers. And then the other one is the parking fee revolving, which probably at this point if you're thinking of doing something with parking spaces, maybe you wanna just hold off until you come up with whatever that plan is gonna be and then make a decision on that one. It could be, you could use, again, that would be an appropriate use of that. It would go right back into the parking lot, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, and just, just we did have an agenda item to make these changes, but I'll bump it up to this because oh. it just makes sense with this discussion. Um, so the first item uh, is the NOG account, and there's $1,661.35. Are you recommending that we leave the money there and spend from that account or yes. transfer it? Yes, so I would recommend just leaving it mm -hmm. there and spend for okay. from that account. And have the, the, our Police and Chief Academic Officer yep. direct the spending. Yep. Okay. So, does anybody have any? Okay. Is that um, are those fees from all the area schools that we collected and dumped in there? It, a lot of it was when the other districts came. Different schools hosted different portions, and it was they had to pay for their lunch. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much what it's left over. In like they, each school district was charged a certain amount and it was to cover all of like the presenters invoices so that's just years worth of a little bit left over okay. so that there's none of that that belongs to any other district no yeah nope. good question 
Any other questions? Um, I would entertain a motion to utilize the $1,661.35 from the NOG revolving account at the direction of uh, our chief academic officer. So moved. I have a second. And I have a second. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, thank you. Um, the second account we were looking at is the parking fees. Um, I know Ms. Geister said that we may want to hold off since parking has uh, and, and, uh, become a question, um, but I will entertain any discussions anyone wants to have. And if someone does want to make a motion to do something with it, obviously you're more than welcome to. I do have a question. Uh, I missed something about parking. Is it, it isn't necessarily parking issues. I, peop, uh, there was a time in which um, seniors, juniors, whoever had cars, you would you would be charged a fee um, to park on yes, no. campus. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, when you collect those funds, you there's a couple things you can do. You can certainly put them back into the parking lot itself. Um, although you generally don't generate enough money to really do anything substantial, but painting lines it certainly adds to that. Um, it's it's there if if that is something that we're looking to move to at some point yeah we might as well just keep it there we won't certainly be able to do anything with the 211 bucks i think it is <laughs> right um but it's it's really just to help keep the upkeep it, it i've seen it i've seen it a couple different ways i've seen it in absolutely just just like this parking and i've also seen it in some type of student activity account um for seniors or, or juniors or whatever the case may be uh, but if we are looking to do something, um, then this would be a good start, right? Uh, something to the parking lot, so to speak. Um, another question. Uh, is that still in the handbook that they charge? Yeah. No. No. Yeah, that was taken out. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking too in the handbook, because these are more, I think, fines. Right. These are parking fines that um, oh, yeah. probably okay. the SRO would yep. would deliver to the kids maybe if they were parking They used in to the be right a fee though. They used to have to mm -hmm. apply to have a parking mm -hmm. and they'd get a little badge mm -hmm. or something so they could park right. their parking lot. So which I, think, think I think that's probably where they stem from, but this has been on the books forever. For years. Yeah. So I'm wondering and then I'm speaking out loud if we should consider closing it and if we do decide to do something sure. then we can address how it should be handled if it should be student activities versus something else based right. upon what it would be we were collecting. Because we don't collect anything today, so this money's just sitting here. So um, I, would, I would make a motion that we dissolve this. Revolve. Should we dissolve it? I'm, I'm looking at the, you could, because I, I, I just you can always you can always put it back. Um, I, I just I hate to have accounts sitting out there doing nothing. It doesn't yeah, make sense right. to me. So I just want to use the right terminology to sure. make a motion with. So I, I would motion that we would dissolve the parking fee account, which is what three one nine, and the two hundred eleven dollars and fifty six cents that is in there would be transferred to the general fund to be utilized for parking lot maintenance, um, and this way it goes away. And there's a second. Any comments or concerns? Do we have a uh, parking lot maintenance account? You have building maintenance building accounts. Maintenance. You have grounds accounts. Which would? Would it be better suited in, in one of those rather than the general fund? For $211, we would probably just charge the invoice right against Pay. that, and that would Close it make okay. it go away. Mm -hmm. So it'll be, so I'll make a friendly amendment that we will close this out by paying an invoice for parking lot maintenance, whatever it is, um, in the amount of two hundred eleven dollars and fifty six cents, um, and that will and then dissolve the account once it is empty. Do I still, and I still have a second. Um, any other questions? Thank you, Lori. That was a good pick up there. So, uh, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. So that was unanimous. Thank you, Mrs. Geister, for looking at those. Okay. Any other questions that anyone has on any of the numbers so far? I know we've 
already discussed that we have done a budget for a budget freeze with the general fund so that is still in place um, I, I don't think there's any new surprises that I saw but um, no I mean right money's coming in monthly as I request it okay. anyone else have any questions or comments okay thank you all right, so next up we were going to do a London Paris field trip update. Uh, Mrs. Fliss was going to do that and she's coordinating the trip. She's not here, so we will put that off to the next meeting and see where that, uh, the status of that trip stands. Mrs. Koshal? May I just ask when that's taking place? That is April of 2020. Thank you. And yeah, we're all invited. Yes. <laughs> Are we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. $4,000? <laughs> Next up, the FY20 school year calendar update. Because I know Dr. Kazanet loves to activate his calendar committee. I do. I do. They're my favorite group. I want to tell them that. Um, so we, we looked at the calendar, obviously. We actually found um, a mistake um, in regards to the days on the month of May, of May. We counted the 31st at one point. And so that's what the committee's for. Um, what we did is we established uh, a couple of things. We established, obviously, the, you know, uh, when, if approved, when the uh, PD days would be for the all, uh, PD days for all staff prior. So what will happen is we'll present, I believe, two calendars, one with a traditional opening, which generally happens before Labor Day, and one that starts after Labor Day. Um, we've talked about this a few times, but um, the, the building committee um, is recommending that we start after Labor Day, uh, just to give all involved enough time to move in, move out, all the things that need to happen. Um, we are on time and on budget, but you know, just moving the sheer amount of people and things that are going to have to be moved around um, will take as much time as possible. Okay. Um, the what is this this calendar uh or the shell of it will be turned over to the pd committee first before it comes back uh, to be discussed um they're going to discuss the number of half day uh, pd days uh, given what we've uh, negotiated in terms of professional development the ndea some of that might have changed and so we want to get a clearer picture on do we need as many half days or not and if we do where would they be located so that's what the PD committee will um, discuss the last week of February? Okay. Uh, yeah, I think it's the 28th. The 28th. So once that takes place, we also have a couple other um, questions about midterms and where they set up, et cetera. And then I'll, I will come before you, and I, it'll certainly be before the March, one of the March meetings, uh, to, uh, you know, to, rec to present both and to gain a recommendation. Okay. Thank you. And thank you, too all the committees that work on this. All right. Uh, next up we have an e-learning blizzard bag update. I will turn it over to Dr. Kazan to yeah. just introduce and we'll So, well, it's on, we, so you're gonna serve in both roles, but um, we, Ms. Boudreau is on the committee and she will give an update, and this will be actually an update, because uh, I have not had the latest update as well, because I kind of keep, keep track of it, but uh, last year, you gave permission to at least start exploring um, the, the possibility of e-learning. And if you allow me to use the word blizzard bags or snow satchels or whatever you'd like, uh, uh, you know, we, we have a wealth of information in this district. We have several members um, of our staff who live in other communities and actually sat on the, on either the parent committee or something to that effect that developed um, this this policy for the last several years, which so they've seen it in the tough, you know, the first time, then to go back and uh, fix the mistakes, etc. So, given all of that, given that charge, uh, we I don't know how many meetings, Kristen. You can certainly talk about that. How many times you guys have met those type of things? But um, they have an update just as as far as their progress to date. And I, I turn it over. Okay. Ms. Woodrow. Do you want to come down and? Oh, come on. <laughs> really? yeah. We have to we have to hear you on the, on the microphone. Why? Unless you use your teacher oh, voice. Gosh. I'll use my teacher voice. <laughs> Great. Okay. So uh, we met starting in January. We're meeting at least once a week. Um, and we were meeting throughout this time. We had all um, Shantae, um, 
and a couple of the other teachers have been part of um, the Mahar Blizzard Bad Committees. They, um, Mahar was very kind to us and said, here are all of our documents. So um, we were able to see what they did, how they've done it, what kind of surveys they've sent out, that kind of thing. We're looking at um, possibly creating blizzard bags at elementary middle school level in the case that um, we went over the number of days or however you would like to do that. Um, we're looking at missed time before MCAS. That's when it's the most important. Making up the days in June doesn't help our MCAS scores at all. Um, that was where we were really looking to come across this with. Um, we know that the high school right now is one-to-one, -one, and most children take their Chromebooks home, and so it would be more of an e-learning um, bag or whatever um, on that level, and each teacher would be responsible for creating a workable um, list of things to do for the kids that would increase their learning or keep them learning. <coughs> we really want them to do it. That's where we're at. Um, I, just, so from an administration perspective, I know the state came out with some general guidelines mm -hmm. that, you know, really wait for three days before you consider, right, so that the kids can have some snow days and be kids and whatnot. Um, so if, in fact, we were to implement this, because um, I know we talked about maybe trying to pilot it um, to see if, how it was going to work for us, um, can you explain a little bit about the teacher's role on one of these days? Sure. So um, from what I'm understanding in the different districts is that teachers are available for a certain amount of time on an e-learning day. So it might be, say, 9 to 12 or 9 to 12, you know, whatever you as a committee say teachers will be available for. We would send home a bag that would um, have multiple um, activities, and then if children or parents had questions or the, say, you know, um, what did you mean by this, or they want to send you pictures or whatever, we would be available by computer to answer any questions. I have a yeah. sure. yes. If teachers are going to be available, could the times be set up so that not only are they available, say, 9 to 12 in the morning, could they be available for a few hours in the evening? Because sometimes parents come home and they're the ones that are working with their students and they're the ones that may have questions. Has that been talked about? Um, it wasn't, but I'm sure, I mean, I'm on. And I only know that from yeah. experience and listening to some people who have had that right. issue, so. Um, we understand that there are caregivers, we understand that there's daycare, you know, all mm -hmm. of that. Um, if they were to have that kind of question, they could, you know, feel free to email us. I mean, most of us have email, we check it daily anyway, or mm -hmm. daily. Um, but the children would have up to three days after the blizzard bag day to actually complete the assignments and turn them in. Otherwise, they would be considered passive. So just to make sure I understand. So if it is a blizzard bag day mm -hmm. and my child doesn't complete the assignment, they still have an opportunity for three days to work with the teacher so there's additional time, not just yes. on that day. Yes. And then one of the things that was discussed was what happens if you say we're in ice storm away and we have no internet whatsoever, you know, now you've got your high schoolers that can't do these assignments either. Um, that is definitely something that you could say, okay, this is not an e-learning bag day, but that would be determined by Dr. Pesciano. So, you know, it's um, an interesting how much work goes into this because you do have to, okay, so you have the, the ice, the ice age um, question, right? <laughs> what happens when everything is out? Um, and so then there's, there's, there's that. So it's just a snow day. I mean, that's, it's very simple. 
Um, and there's a lot of other different things which, I'm, which I need to learn because there's some things on my end that I actually have to um, actually initiate. The, the, the three days also is for, again, because folks have wondered, well, what happens if you have no internet? You have no way of, get, but internet is working. It's just that you, the home does not personally have um, any type of uh, device or internet. The three days um, is also for that as well. So there's, uh, it, it's, it's equitable in the sense that if you literally have no way of communicating <coughs> for whatever reason, um, that you, you can make up the work um, and be counted, so to speak. So that's, you know, so once we get it all kind of fine-tuned, I'm gonna have to learn my role in it, I guess, as well. But. Will we see samples? <clears throat> yeah, the work samples, um, again, we're not at that point. It's funny, because Lisa and I were speaking about, you know, gee, wouldn't it be neat to at least try it once? I'd like to, and I had said to the community, I said, I'd like to at least pilot it one time prior. I don't know if, you know, and I would, I would defer to Lisa, of course, in the group, but I don't think that they don't, they're gonna be ready this year to pilot one time anyway, and so they may want to pilot next year or, or start the process, I don't know. I do have an example of a cover sheet, so each bag would then go with a cover sheet from the teacher. This is not anything from us, but take a look at it. Um, I am on a group of teachers across the country, and as you know, um, Thank you for so saying. So weather has been quite crazy there. Um, as of this morning, there is one school, uh, one school district out west that has had 15 days. Oh. Um, so and what do you have do? Yeah. And yeah. where do we make up that time? <coughs> oh, Lori has a question. Oh, Lori has a question. How is this updated? So for example, are we making like a generic thing in September? and they use it in February. How does that impact instruction? So, so is it like practice or how are we, how are we compensating for a full day of direct instruction? On our end, on the elementary middle school, it would be more of a review of very recent or uh, facts and all that reading, fluency, all of that stuff which we do every single day. Um, with activities to do that. On the high school level, they're looking at actual hands-on, this is what we were doing in class learning. That's different. Thank you. Ms. Madsen? Um, my question is, do you, is this something that you give to the kids knowing that you're going to, like, we know that there's going to be a blizzard tomorrow, so you're going to give these kids the bag the day before they leave, or do you say, oh, we didn't realize it was going to be that bad, we didn't give you the blizzard bag, so we're going to give you this blizzard bag today, and you have three days to work on it, even though we're seeing you the next three days coming in. How, how, is, how is this, how do you give it? It's yeah. been done both ways, I believe, in Orange. They started with giving all they did, they made up five blizzard bags. So in September, they gave the kids all five, and then when the superintendent called, they said, okay, today's blizzard bag day number one, you need to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I, they have changed that since, mm -hmm. and they have said something like yesterday happened, right? We knew that the weather was coming in, we would have sent bags home mm -hmm. yesterday. That way, this morning, when the roads were there, you know, then you would have been able to call the day and say, here you go, all right. Just curious, how would that work for his ed class? It could be um, go out and shovel for five minutes. It could be anything. Um, any of the counselors, nurses, all of the, you know, we're all accountable for our time. So they could be doing online learning, they could be doing um, book time, you know, however. We're all looking at what can we do to help the kiddos, and then um, special ed would also be helping us to modify our lessons too. In interestingly, about PE, if I understood it correctly, um, I, uh, I think it's, it's Mahar who has a PE teacher who is, his lessons are, Fantastic, and and so because I, I asked about PE, and I, I'm, I'm I'm almost positive that um, 
he has some very innovative ways to, at, at the elementary level, by the way, too. So it's just not, you know, the older kids go out and shovel, um, build a snowman or anything like that. So I think if, um, and I, I'm going to have to get uh, some of those lessons, because when they told me about them, I was, I was very impressed. It was, it was pretty, it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That, so that would be given up front, say, hey, yeah. you know, here's, for phys ed today, yeah. here's 10 things you could do. Exactly. And I also, yeah. I believe I heard someone saying that, you know, they were asking for like a picture. Yeah, if they could, right. If they so, could to right. say, hey, look at me, I'm building the snowman. On Twitter, our, <laughs> one of our uh, fellow superintendents out there, out near the Berkshires, she called a blizzard bag day. Um, and um, it was for the elementary, and she said, it's blizzard bag day, blah. And don't forget to make your snowman and to send a picture into so and so. And then they, she gave a couple other things. So obviously, people do different things at different levels, but that was, I just, I caught that this morning. I thought you could do a snowman competition. The, I don't know if it was a competition. I have to actually look. It's Rubio. Rubio. That looks most like Dr. Cassidy. Well, that, that, that will get you some extra credit. We, we already have had that competition, actually. Yes. Um, Winter's the state of mind competition. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. This is your blow. Um, are these individualized at all, or are they just a generic, everybody in the class does it? Because so much of, of the day for a student who has intervention isn't addressed there. Our, our interventionists would either be able to help us modify our lessons, accommodating for those, or and my second thing is I'm, I, I am very concerned about parents. They're all working now. That's the, the life. And I'm very concerned if you had three children and you come in at 5 o'clock and you've shoveled your up and now you're going to sit down and do three individual assignments with them, um, that might not be appreciated. <laughs> I definitely think we, as a district, would need to do something for buy-in. Yes. <coughs> Good. Um, I believe that 70% um, would need to do the bags and, and the work in order to do the count. Um, don't quote me on that. I, I'm not sure, but that was the question that came up at the last meeting. Does there have to be a certain number of assignments completed in order for the day to actually count? You know, I know the other point, just being me, is that if you have a day in June, you're building MCAS because you're building the knowledge you're going to use next year. I mean, I don't believe that a day in March is going to have that great an impact on MCAS because we're learning all year through to be able to, if the MCAS is done correctly and it's thinking question, you would have built it. That's, I don't know. That, that makes that big of a difference. I it should. I think if you had one day, it probably wouldn't. If you had 15 days, mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why they, it doesn't make yeah. a big difference. I think the criteria also is not like you're, you're not doing this every single snow day. Right. So in other words, you're, you're starting to get around three, four, five. It's before March already. Now last year, before March, we had, I have to double check this, I think we had five or four already. Um, so I think I'd have to go back, but because we had, how many did we have, eight? It was in February or moment. Right, so I mean, it was a lot. So it, you know, again, it was just too difficult to re-remember. But the, again, this is more than just kind of rote. It's about getting us used to e-learning. I, I, I've said that before. Um, this is where we're going. It's, it is e-learning. We, many of our, six years ago, maybe only 50%, I don't, I don't even know if the statistics are any longer, um, had internet or some type of device. The stuff that we're doing now, we're having 75, 80% of these kids have devices and the stuff that we're doing is device agnostic. It doesn't matter if it's an Apple, a PC, or otherwise. So it's, it's becoming more very, uh, certainly more mainstream. Where do we worry the most? Well, we worry about the elementary the most, students the most, but I'm gonna tell you, in terms of devices, uh, you know, we are seeing that a good 80% of these kids have devices. We're gonna be sending out another survey, again, about does you, do you have a device? Do you have an internet? Whatever. And we'll see how it goes. I know that they all have email. I mean, because we, we do. We had one, one family last year who did not have email um, out of, 
I don't know how many kindergartners and I don't know how many first graders, but that's how we send all of our information out is through email. Well, if you have email, you, 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 have, you have to have a device. You do, right? That's, that's how it works. So, um, but, so that's, we'd like to, you know, we, again, we're not ready yet. Um, obviously, we've got a lot of bugs to work out, but I, thir I certainly think it's worth, you know, looking into. I really do. Just as one other question, and, and don't answer now, but to think about is, you know, we, we need to refer to this as e-learning and not right. blizzard bag. I know we yeah. had that discussion that. at right. one point. Um, you know, what other applications could this be used for? I'm, I'm just thinking we have a lot of half days where um, teachers are pulled for professional development. Well, we send the students home early. Well, could there be assignments on that? Just because you're home doesn't mean that you're still not part of your school day. So, uh, you know, that's probably, I've never probably got a lot of hate mail after saying that mm -hmm. <laughs> from the students mm -hmm. and my children. Um, <laughs> but, you know, are there other applications where this could be used to either augment or in place of what we currently do today? You know, where are we going with this, you know, this? Uh, forward learning progress. Well, we're, we're a Google school, and we have Google Classroom, and we certainly are not using it probably to our full capacity, but that is our next, our kind of our next major jump into using it at all levels. The high school uses it, mind you don't, yeah, I'm talking down. I know at the middle school level, you know, there's a, there's a young man who's checking his grades very, very carefully right <laughs> now and is getting his, you know, Google Classroom on. Uh, so it, it, we know that um, that's, that's the application. It's, it's constant learning, right? It's, it's flipping the classroom, which we don't even, don't, people don't even talk about any longer, but um, that's, that's the application that we're looking for because we're, if we're going to get students ready for 21st century learning, it's all online. Uh, or much, much of what we do is online. It's, it has something to do with that. So that's what we're trying to get to someday. Okay. However, we don't want Sure. with each other, that they get their heads down in their, their, their phones and their, their mm -hmm. computers. And so you don't want to take them away from that classroom uh, environment oh. so that, no. you know, just no. interacting with other people. Sure. Um, I, I, I can't say that I, I look forward to them spending more time by themselves. So I, I, you know, I don't want to look into more time at home by themselves. I think parents are struggling too. You'll see a lot of research, young parents, there's a lot of research about when you put the screen in, how do you use it, how long can they be on it, what the brain is doing. Um, there's not that this affects that bad, but at the same time you need buy-in, there's going to have to be education about when and how and how much. And they're looking for that information now because all these articles are, are out there. It's just as Lori just said, it's yeah, and I think that's probably a nice segue into, so what should we expect for the next steps? Because obviously we as a committee, um, you know, the state wants us to approve yep. whatever program and they've asked for information shared, want something that's approved. Right. Um, you know, it sounds like we need a lot more details, mm -hmm. obviously, on paper. So, you know, what do you see the next steps in timing just so that we can be prepared to well, respond? I would, I would think the next steps are kind of the rules of the road, right? So what does this, what does it mean? So, you know just as we were talking about, you have three days to make it up, just the kind of the real, uh, the pragmatic piece. Also, you know, an example of a blizzard, e-learning bag, whatever, they, whatever we're gonna call it, um, um, but the example at every level. So, you know, high schools be very simple. It's just what they're doing now. Uh, the middle school actually is getting to the point where it's what they're doing now. Um, but the, the elementary, you know, will we'll have to take some, I mean, I think is it being passed on? Yeah, it's right here. Okay, so you know, obviously, we're 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 utilizing templates from from other districts, and we will certainly make it our own. Um, that's that's the that is in fact I think the next steps, and of course, when do we use that? I mean, when so when when will we give this you know give this thing a ride? You know, when do we try? When do we try it out? Um, I think that would be the next the next piece. To it. Yeah, and, and I, you know, and we call them blizzard bags, but we also had heat days this well, year too. Right. So, right. you know, it, so it's it's interesting as as 
you know, we come across these things. There's a, it's not just because of a snowstorm. Right. There could be any. There could be, uh, you know, a flood, and you know, it doesn't happen. But you know, that we need to, to accommodate. So, locusts. You know, I know. Don't jinx us. Yeah, I know. No. Right. So we'll we'll be on the lookout Frogs. for when that's available, yes. and we'll get it on whatever agenda. Um, thank you so much thank for, you. for the update. And thank you for the work. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, no, it'll all be. That's what I actually yeah. meant. It'll be the physical, the physical piece to it. Perfect. What's that? I'm I'm sure. I, I don't I don't know what I can't see what that document is, but the yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Yes. Uh, public input. Do we have anyone from the public who wants to speak? I just wanted to share with you from the Institute of Spirits that on March 9th we're sponsoring a color grant. We have an anonymous donor that is helping us pay for construction. Um, we're getting uh, members of the Spartan from the New York of New Hampshire. They're going to come in and work with the kids. Um, we have a visiting color guard um, director from UMass Amherst that's going to come in and speak to the kids about color guard after high school. And um, we're opening it up to Gardner, Winchington, Athol, Orange, anybody who's interested, free to the public. That's yeah. awesome. Where can, for, where can people, okay, where can people find out more information? Uh, actually, there will be an article Thank you. It sounds like a great opportunity for people to find out what it's about and, and get some good learning on how to be a good color guard person. It's great. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. That's yeah. great. Any other input? No? Uh, NDEA? Did you want to? Nice. I walked out of there uh, almost unscathed. It was, it was, yeah. much, it was very, no, it was good. It was actually an excellent conversation. We have, honestly, we talk every week, me, uh, Steve and myself, and um, we worked through a lot of stuff, and it was great to actually see what I've been there uh, since, I think, this fall. So it's always good to go back and just kind of check in. Okay. So, yeah, it was good. Good, good. Okay. So, all right, any school committee comments? I made mine. <laughs> Okay. Um, next up is the superintendent contract. Everybody has a copy of it. We had um, actually had a discussion um, in executive session about the contract as part of the negotiation process. Um, so this is the contract that is being recommended by, um, you had turned it over to the administrative and academic committee, subcommittee to work with Dr. Kazimian and put this together. So this is the contract that we had come up with. Um, it is a five-year contract, which would start July 1st of this year and take us through June 30th of 2024. Um, and if you take a look through, there was minimal changes. There was a couple of verbiage changes that needed to happen um, to just make things work right on the, mm -hmm. the finance side. There was a, a stipend. It said a reimbursement. It should have said stipend. So we had to fix that. Um, so I would, if someone wanted to, entertain a motion to accept this contract um, or take any questions if anyone had. We can do that first. a motion that we accept the contract and I have a second any questions or comments seeing done I am going to do a roll call just to have that on file Mr. Mason Aye. Mrs. Madsen yes. Mrs. Robichaud Aye. Mrs. Kojal yes Mrs. Triple O yes Mrs. Charnier yes Mr. Marks yes and Mrs. Hughes says yes Great. so we have accepted a five-year contract with our superintendent and after this we will take care of the official signatures and putting that in place so um, thank you dr kazavan for um, agreeing to allow us to negotiate oh, yeah. <laughs> <Again>. <laughs> wow, you're um, we look forward to another um, 
great five years with you. Um, uh, personally, I <laughs> there are a few surveys. groans. Just I don't know if there's how many surveys that you could do for Vicky. I'm going to love what surveys are coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, as we talked about at the last meeting when we did your performance <laughs> review, um, you know, you have definitely made a very good impact on this district and, and have set us on a really good direction. Um, so I, for one, will say that I'm very excited that you know you're you will be with us to continue. Uh, leading the the district and uh, making continue making the improvements that we see. Did it? Thank you. I like it here, so it's good. I'm glad. We like having it. Yes, we do. Anyone else want to comment? I think the community has benefited as well. It's a nice outreach. I think it's worked both ways. I, you know, the community's been good to me. They really have. I mean. Um, boy, you certainly given me a lot of, you know, a lot of leeway, especially in the very beginning, how it all started out. We don't need to go over that again. But, um, I mean, truthfully, they, they did, I, I appreciate their, their trust, honestly, immediately, because it, it had to happen because of all everything. But um, I, I really do have great people. Who I don't usually call, um, say nice things about them, especially when they're around. But um, I do have an excellent group uh, that, um, that helps me out, keeps me, keeps me centered and on tasks. So. It's been excellent. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay. No, nah, it's okay. Listen. No, no, she's, she's, she wants to clap. Yeah, Don't clap. To clap. <laughs> I do. Let's clap. Uh, <laughs> I would have liked the cake. I mean, uh, next month. <laughs> <laughs> she's very good. Let us know when you're off the diet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The next item on the new business agenda is the creation of an NRSD scholarship revolving account. We currently don't have a revolving account that hosts scholarship related monies. Um, these are monies that the community might want to donate and say, hey, I'd like this to go to scholarships. So um, it was requested that this account be created to put monies in, and I know the next item we'll talk about moving some monies into it, but. Um, yeah, it's not really a revolving account. It's just like a scholarship, scholarship account because those are housed a little bit differently mm -hmm. than a revolving okay. account. So let's gift. take revolving right out of there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so a I would entertain a motion. I'm going to take revolving off of here to approve the creation of an NRSD scholarship account. So moved. I have a, mo a motion. Do I have a second? second? And I have a second. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. The second point here is now we had, I believe it was three, maybe almost four years ago. Yeah, it was 2016. Um, 2016. We had um, some monies come to us through the Erickson Post 109 Scholarship Fund. And we had, as a committee, um, given some direction as to how the scholarships would be delivered. And what we had said is, okay, but when there's very little money left there, less than the $500 scholarships that were being um, given out. What are we going to do with this very small balance? So we as a committee had motioned that we would put that money into the general? To, to, to start this one? To start yeah. this, okay. Yes, the okay. NRSD one. Right, so um, just to make this official now that we have the account, I would entertain a motion that would approve the transfer of the balance of the Erickson Post 109 scholarship fund monies. Um, it, it has $2,800 okay. in it, so I don't know if you want to run it a few more years okay. at the giving out the 500 or you want to take a portion and okay. move it to establish the new one. That's cool. up to you. I think we should use the 500 so once we yeah, once the balance is less than, than five hundred, yeah, yeah okay. once it's less than so I, I would entertain a motion then to approve the transfer of the balance of the Erickson Post one hundred and nine scholarship fund monies once the balance of that account is less than five hundred dollars to the NRSD scholarship account. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? And I have a second. Any questions on that? Seeing none. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous. Okay, the next item was just reviewing the revolving accounts, which we did earlier when we got, had our business manager report. And 
The last item of new business is our FY20 budget hearing and certification meeting dates. We met at 5 o'clock as a finance meeting. We, we discussed it, so I will say this at this meeting now for the public. We initially had planned on doing our preliminary hearing March 6th and our certification with the vote on March 13th. We are prepared to move forward with our proposed budget number, so we want to move those dates up. The committee has agreed that our preliminary hearing will now be Wednesday, March, no, February 27th. Thank you, I don't know why I can't keep that one straight. February 27th at six o'clock in the Kiva will be our preliminary hearing. And our final budget hearing and the vote will take place on Wednesday, March 6th, 6th at six o'clock here in the Kiva. So that will be changed. Um, and just with those changes as well, we will add um, a school committee meeting on Wednesday, March 20th at 6 p.m. Uh, it sh that should be in the library rather than the Kiva. We're looking to move our regular meetings to the library. We'll see how that works. Um, so we'll add that meeting to the schedule as well. Do we need to post the warrant subcommittee at 545? We, we will do that, okay. yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, Superintendent report. We had uh, an enrollment update and an FY20 budget update. And anything sure. else that uh, has come up that you would like to? So in terms of enrollment, we are holding steady. Honestly, we've, we've seen, you know, no movement um, from one month to the other. We're still, um, we did under, and Susan, um, it, it's actually, it's, it is, it's, it's a compliment. It's funny all at the same time. We, you know, we, we get a lot of requests for school choice and we get, we, we receive them year round. Um, and we have to say to them, it's an online form. Once we open, we're, we don't even know if we're going to accept school, you know, at what level, this, that, and the other thing, but we were, we were under such pressure. <laughs> Honestly, we're just getting these calls. So finally, we just opened up the portal in terms of just allowing folks to fill out the form, just so that way they could feel like they're, you know, that they've, they've checked that off the box and it's, it's, it's there. So now come the calls about, well, when is it, when is it? <laughs> so, but anyway, um, we, we opened it up the first day and we instantly had, or on Monday, but we had how many? 50? We have 16 now. And so in two days, or roughly at that point in time, when we were looking at your end of the day, it was 16. And so, you know, I go back just to let, you know, to keep us Is that all. elementary? It, no, they're across the actually, board, no, actually. it's kind of across the board, yeah. Mostly middle school. Oh, good. We yes, have, okay. we have. Um, we've done four tours at the high school um, uh, for students who were otherwise interested, um, which is quite a bit, uh, quite frankly, for February. So again, um, I would think that, um, like last year, we, we talked about this, but we, you know, we had 50, 50 applications go basically unanswered. We just could not and would not. Um, entertain them because we just can't, uh, quite frankly. So um, that is, that um, is always good news. Um, otherwise, we are, we are exactly at 1434 um, as of uh, today. <laughs> so I think she, uh, she did it again today. So, um, so we're holding steady. So everything is, is, is good there. Um, in terms of the, the budget, uh, the FY20, is that right? I'm sorry, the FY20 budget update. Well, obviously Monday we, we presented. Um, I, I have to thank, obviously, uh, Susan and Anne-Marie um, and Kate, who, you know, that, that slide, if, if someone would have seen us make the slideshow, um, I think that one, they would have laughed and questioned a lot about <laughs> our method of madness. But it was really a storyboard that we actually did. We set up a storyboard. Um, a lot of information, a lot of numbers, uh, obviously, and you know, rightfully so. So what we feel good about, I think, and I think I said this on Monday, um, I was nervous to start the uh, process this early. I had never started the process as early um, as we did this year. Um, dealing with cost and not, and not revenue, is, is, it just, just doesn't feel right to me. Just, just, just my experience behind things. But what I do feel good about now is that it's, it's done. And I know uh, just that, that we're not pushing. So now February vacation comes up. So we, you know, we stand by the information. We've, uh, again, a tremendous amount of work. Um, and I guess we'll see where it goes, obviously, as we discussed 
earlier in the finance meeting. Um, but it's it, that the budget that we've created is probably the best I've ever created, been part of, I should say, given the fact of where we um, where we used our, our goals and what our vision um, is here in the district and what we identified as need. And so I, I think it was the, probably the, the best process I've ever been part of, quite frankly. That budget document is available? It is online, so right it's now? It's on the um, NRSD website. Yeah. Perfect, so if anyone wants to see it, they can go look. Mrs. Madsen? I have to come, I should say, I've been on the board for nine years, mm -hmm. and that was the best presentation of the budget I have ever mm -hmm. seen for any year that I've I've been on this. It was clear. It was. It was very. Uh, user friendly. It was user friendly. Mm -hmm. It was. Uh, I understood exactly what you were saying. Mm -hmm. It was. It was wonderful, and I appreciate it. And I thank you very much for that presentation. Well, thank you, uh, and, and the, the appreciation goes to the folks. I mean, it was. We really worked hard on clarity, um, or tried to. We tried very hard to work on how clear. Uh, we were presenting these numbers. So sometimes that meant we had to add two more slides. Seriously. So we, we did the pie graph when, you know, to, to show kind of just the representation. So we, we did that on purpose. And so I'll be doing the, the, the dog and pony show with all the, um, all the staff. I could not make it in time when the meeting was and all the, of course, it's February and we have these snow events or whatever they were. But I'll be going to their, um, their, in March, it'll be or end of February if they already have their um, their meetings to let them know um, to to explain um, what our thoughts are and what our what our design and goals are. But. Right. Thank you. Any, any other comments? I think that if somebody brought it up online, that they it's very clear what's in where it is, and um, they would benefit well from looking at it. Yeah, I think transparency. Um, which we've been asked for, sure. um, and I know you always bring up the feedback that, yeah. that you had received when you did your, you know, your tour of the world when you yep. started, um, your listening tour, and um, and I, you know, have being a budget person for most mm. of my life, um, it is very easy to walk through yeah. and understand, yeah. and and you know, there is this big chapter 70, what is all this stuff? That's one piece of it, but what do we need to run the school? Right. And that's what this focus is on, is you know, what do we need to educate our children? And why, and right? So I think that that's the other part about it, is like, so why would you spend 20, you know, 20 million or whatever it may be on what? And, and why do we have to do that? Why should we do this? And, and I, I, again, that goes back to our goals and our vision. I think that, you know, I don't know if lying if line budgets, line by line budgets, were ever um, posted on you know websites and, all. but the more information that is out there, the more questions are asked. And I and I do I, I like I love them, uh, because and there's a lot of misconception out there with with school budgets, but that's good. That's okay. Just ask the question, and that's why when we start posting these things, and we're, we put it all out there. There certainly could be no you know no claim that we're hiding any anything. It's it's all pretty well laid out and. And so, but yeah, we, we've, well, it's taken a couple of years for us to get it right. Um, and I think we've got a pretty good uh, formula now in terms of how we'll, we'll go about it. For, for example, new positions or positions that are needed or justified so that a parent could look at this and see, oh, they're going to have this and this is why. Right. So it's and the funding sources and why did E and D go, you know, go up so much? Uh, why? Well, you're not spending yes. your money. Well, yes, we are. But hey, guess what? We've done so well with you know Medicaid. This was for Monday night, you know, and be able to show those numbers and what that means. And I think that that, that goes a long way, uh, just because now you can understand why um, why it's important, you know, to uh, to hire positions that can generate Medicaid Medicaid funds. So. And it shows effort on the school part that we're not just sitting back expecting the towns no. to pay for everything. We're working as hard yeah. as we can. Yeah. Well, it's important. We have to be fiscally responsible. Absolutely. Right. Yes. One thing, unfortunately, that it doesn't show um, is as far as Medicaid going up and up and up and up, mm -hmm. you know, that we're getting more. Um, it does show, um, I think it was around 2016 where it kind of starts to jump, you know, 16 to 17 to 18. There's no comment as to 
you know, why it's jumping. It just shows that it's jumping. And, you know, I, again, applaud you and your staff for um, looking into that um, as far as, uh, you know, where, where we can get more mm. for, for our for a buck. Yeah. Yeah. For a buck. And um, whereas in, in previous years, um, no one was really looking into that. So, mm. um, unfortunately, on those, on those, on those slides, um, you're not giving yourself enough credit, but that's, that's really what it is, that, uh, well, you know, since you've been here, we're, we're actually more. I, I got to tell you about school choice, though, and, th and thank you. I, I think that first off, you let people who know what they do do their job. Mm -hmm. So first off, just let them do what they do. Um, and but school choice, and I said this is that that is our one of our largest drivers. Mm -hmm. um, and again, uh, you know, you folks know me well enough. I, you know, I, I, if I thought we were doing something excellent, I'll tell you. And if I don't think we're doing something excellent, I will. I'll say that as well. School choice is going up because we have really good teachers. We have excellent staff. Uh, this place is safe. We're educating children. I, as a parent, no matter what I do, I, I'm a superintendent currently, uh, so we'll see, you know, but I'm not going to send my child to a district that is not educating him or them, um, and it's not safe, and it's not, it's not, a, it's not a good place to go. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it for PR sakes, for God's sakes. I mean, that's just, why would you do it? We have, we have, we have really good people here, and that's what this budget hopes to help support. You saw that a lot of social emotional um, supports. I'll just leave it at that. Um, well, that's because our staff need those supports in order to help support our kids. Um, so that's what we value. And and so, but but thank you, uh, Medicaid and competitive grants. Uh, I I learned from a. a a former CPA, she was a business manager for 30 years and became a superintendent. Uh, you know, she told me that these three areas are where you're going to live or, or live or die in terms of finance, and you need to you need to monitor them well. And we do that very very well. We do right now, I have to say, um, because we have good people here. And it always it always boils back to that. It really does. So, thank you. Well, thank you again. <clears throat> All right. What's next up? We have curriculum and instruction. I know Ms. No. Kalis. PBS. Yep, yeah, she's, yeah. she's doing that. Yep. Um, we'll come down and she is going to speak to us about PBIS, everything we wanted to know, right, on the back of a matchbook or something. And then, <laughs> and then um, yeah, the data dashboard update and um, we have program of studies on the agenda. I know that um, a little more work needs to be done there, but we'll get that update. I'm doing it right now. Yep. All right, so oh, I need some to make. Um, so I'm going to talk about the data dashboard first, if that's okay. Sure. And I'll wait until you um, get the sheet out of your room. I'm glad that I Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Is it okay? Do you need do you need that one too? Do you think? Okay. So sure which one. So. Um, for the data dashboard, I have to do it this way because if I log into the data dashboard, that's for oh. If I log into the data dashboard, you see students and student information, and we can't do that. Yeah. So I took some screenshots to walk you through what we have so far that's okay. for the data dashboard. But also, um, we had a meeting this morning with school grades that had to be postponed because of the yeah. um, late start. So I'll answer your questions as best I can. So on the top of the page, you'll see that we have an attendance dashboard. Um, this is what school grades looks like when you open it up. And on the left, in the gray, you'll see there's find student communications dashboard. If you click dashboard, this is what comes up. There are three tabs. One is for attendance, one is for behavior, and one is for staff attendance. The attendance dashboard gives you the um, rate for the day, as well as in that um, kind of speedometer, <laughs> it gives you the um, monthly rate percentage, and then it tells you number of students and total absences. It, 
further, and you can click on any of those bars and get more information about that date. So if you wanted to go back, you know, not look at today, but look at last week, whatever, you can do that. Below that, it talks about attendance use codes, and this is something that we worked on cleaning up as a result of our accountability data at the beginning of the year. When we analyzed that, we realized that 10% of our accountability data at each school is related to excessive absenteeism, and we want to make sure that our score is as good as it can be for a number of reasons, most importantly because students learn when they're here. So we've um, talked previously about some initiatives we've had in that regard, but we did clean up our attendance codes, and I did include them on the next page in case you're wondering what AU is and ATRU. We used to have many more codes, but this shows you um, the prevalence of each individual code. Below that it says Merchworthy, <coughs> and there's different tabs. So you could, um, what, what is opened up to you right now is the five plus consecutive absences. Under the name student, it would list the students. This is why I can show you live what homeroom they're in and so forth, more information about them. You could click on different tabs for most absences, most targets or dismissals, and get a list of who are the most absent students in the school, who are the most tardy students in the school, and so forth, so that you could target your efforts on improving attendance toward that. On the back of that page is the attendance codes. They're significantly streamlined from what we had before, thanks to Mr. Frigasono and others um, who worked on that project. Then the next page shows, so the first was the tab that said attendance. This is now the behavior tab. This has worked to a certain degree, but we are looking at another way to track behavior, and that's related to the next presentation, which is about PPIS, right? But we can look at this and see the number of students, number of referrals. Again, you would have a list of who the students were and um, what those referrals meant. On the next page, which is the last page, it will show you, just like it does for attendance, it will show you the categories of referral codes and the categories of referral app actions, what was happened, what happened as a result. Um, just like the other page where it had a student um, heading, and I cut that off in my screenshot, it has, a re in the knowledge worthy section, it has a referral heading, and that would be where you list, the students would be listed, the actions that are scheduled, the actions not served, most in-school suspensions, most out-of-school suspensions. So you're getting a bit, a fair bit of data from this dashboard that we've really just begun to develop and utilize. At any stage, if you pulled up, for example, um, most tardies and you had the list of students, you could click on that student and you could get detailed information about, you know, when were the tardies, were they Mondays, you know, whatever, what the dates were. So you could dive down into the data can't show you because of confidentiality. Yeah. So I have a, just a couple of questions. Sure. So obviously it's a big step to get the data yes. and then into a dashboard that you can, right. can look at. And obviously we're still vetting through getting the population, making sure it's all correct. And um, what are the next steps though? Who who uses this data? How does it Hmm. How does it get used? You've kind of alluded to some of it. You know, I know attendance, the state uses it as accountability, but the state can look at what they want. You know, we hit those issues when kids aren't here. Sure. So, you know, I'm just kind of curious, like, wh what are we going to do next with this to make sure that it's great, we count something, but what are we going right. to do with it? Absolutely. So we did um, talk to um, administrators about what actions they've taken regarding attendance in schools. So obviously letters go out to, to families where students are absent a lot. There's an education campaign. I know, for example, in um, the middle school, Mrs. Le Ms. Lafreniere has multiple times po posted in her newsletter really great information about the importance of attendance and just um, different information about um, to kind of educate families about that. Um, we 
had we had our meeting this morning, we would have taken some next steps with this, which include what do people around the table, how will they use this information, but then what other information do people around the table need, but we were canceled because of weather. <laughs> Should have blizzard bag, right? Yeah. <laughs> Look, I didn't say it. Yeah, but we, we're rescheduling that. Great. Um, and it is, you know, it's really important information. The behavior information, you'll see where that comes into play in the next presentation and why that's so important. Now, this data on the dashboard um, is available to just the administration in the school. So I, as a parent, you know, obviously grades is what I look at and make sure the kids do the assignments. Um, and, and obviously, you yeah, don't have an answer. Like, uh, to me, it seems like there's, there's so many other things. Usually the standard was the report card comes home and you know, that tells me everything I need. And, and I used to see those boxes with how many days out and how many tardy and then I can say, oh, my kid was never tardy, why is there six here? I, um, so I'm, I'm curious to see, and, and again, if we haven't thought through or there isn't a model for this, you know, how, how do we integrate this information back to the parents um, in some way, shape, or form? Because obviously this data is too rough to be sent out. Um, but there's got to be some type of communication, and it's going to drive communication. And I don't know if there's any, any model for that. Or, um, I don't really have an answer for that. Right? So this is data that I think we're at the stage now where we're thinking on several different levels about the kind of data we're collecting and having collecting data purposefully, right? Not just collecting data for data's sake, but purposefully for how we what we need to know and how we're using that data. I can't really answer you about the parent for a couple reasons. One is because I'm not really um, as facile with school grades as I could be, and that's one reason why we have this meeting mm -hmm. set up. I think different people are at different stages of being able to manipulate school grades, so I don't know what it looks like from a parent point of view. I'm sure you can see your own child's attendance mm -hmm. data and so yeah. forth. I'm not sure, actually, if you can see your own child's behavior data. I'm not <clears> sure about that. No, but what it, what it does uh, is, you know, in any situation, if we're dealing with, you know, a, a student that's been, um, you know, had a rough go, and we're looking at all the things that we have done. Uh, how many times have we communicated? What? How many letters? How many phone calls? Um, what, what response? To that, to that degree, that is what we will expect to be in in this information. So when the teacher says, "Look, I've." Um, you know, we need to do some type of intervention. We need to do it because this is where we'll get to. I'm sure with you guys is that okay? We've had all of these. Into, we've done all of these things at the classroom level. We've done these things at the office level. We might have to consider, you know, doing a tier three yes. or, or or something to that effect. Mm -hmm. That is where this comes in because, and then it'll follow. So, what interventions work? What whatever they did. That's right. mm -hmm. So we've had a focus on, you know, using that, using all of our data purposefully. <laughs> For example, um, this year I, I got some failure reports that came through my email. So I started meetings with the middle school and high school principal to say, okay, what do we do with this information? How are we communicating? What is our action plan to help students early, you know, so forth, right? So really having a focus on not collecting the data for the sake of it, but to what is it telling us? And also thinking about where our gaps are for data that we don't have, and we do have some of those, but we're getting better. <laughs> this is a great first step. Any, anyone else have questions or comments? I love data. I could talk about this all day, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. This is, this is great. I, I'm, I'm encouraged because I think, um, you know, data is powerful, the right data is even more powerful and and it's nice to see the focus on looking at what it is we need and giving people the right tools to be able to help them do their job so thank you so next we're going to talk about pbis and i do have it up there some of you can probably see it others maybe not i gave you some slides that kind of swung in it um so pbis is 
positive behavioral interventions and supports. Like that's the first slide. That really says a lot right there. What PBIS is all about is about um, approaching behavior from a positive stance and then taking that stance to educate, teach, lessons and so forth to teach students what appropriate behavior is and then when that doesn't work what interventions and supports do we have in place for students who struggle just like we would with academics right so with academics we want to approach our content in a positive way we want to engage students we want to motivate them we teach academics and we are taking a position that we need to teach what is expected behavior the same way we teach academics and in academics, if you weren't doing well, we would think about what interventions and what supports do you need. So same idea with um, PBIS. And we start, we, I have made, uh, multiple variations of trainings for PBIS depending on different audiences. And I scaled back um, from a you know, four day, 15 hour <laughs> training for this purpose. But I had to keep this slide in because I think it really makes a statement about what PBIS is. When a flower doesn't bloom, you fix the environment. You might fertilize it more, you might put it on the window because it didn't get enough sun. You fix the environment in which it grows. You don't try to tell the flower to fix itself, right? And that's the approach we need to take with students, both academically, behaviorally, socially, emotionally. So um, what is school-wide PBIS? So it's the application of evidence-based strategies. They're used for multiple reasons. One, which is important, is to increase academic performance. When we have um, positive, safe um, climates in our classrooms, students are able to perform better academically. But of course, also, we want students to be safe. We want them not to be harmed in any way. So we want you know, safety as a key concern. We want to decrease concerning behavior in a proactive way as much as possible, and we want to establish positive school cultures. And lots and lots of research out there shows that culture impacts learning, mm -hmm. right? So the positive culture environment in that classroom, in that school, impacts learning. Creates relationships are everything, right? So it creates an environment where kids can learn. So each school has a school-wide PBIS team. They have a leadership team, and that's comprised of the administration as well as counselors and teachers in the building. Each school <coughs> has a behavior purpose statement, and every school has its own PBIS manual at this point, which has a lot of this information, and it all um, is in line with each other, but tailored a little bit to each school. Elementary community um, has one, but when it gets to some of the details in that manual, it's going to be different for Phillipston than it is for Baldwinville than it is for TC because some of it might be about playground behavior. Well, they have different playgrounds, and so we have to be, you know, mindful of uh, making it um, workable for each building. Though each school has a set of positive expectations and behaviors, and I'm going to show you some examples of what that looks like. Probably most importantly, there are procedures for teaching school-wide and classroom expected behavior. So when we met together last summer as a team, a district-wide team, those teams created lessons for the first day of school, which they then, we rolled out PBIS to all the teachers, and we talked about the lessons. What, how are we going to implement what our expectations are in the cafeteria with students in TC. How are we going to implement what our expectations are in the cafeteria for middle school students and so forth, right? So each building chose, when you see school-wide, we're really thinking kind of big picture. What are those common areas where a lot of behaviors happen, right? Because it's the least structured in some ways of the environments in school. When you're passing in the hall, when you're going to the boys or girls room when you are in the cafeteria. So what are our expectations for those areas? And each school developed 
what those expectations were and examples of what positive behaviors were and lessons to teach them. So we actually um, had teachers on the teams in the summer pretend, and even in, in the first day of school, pretend to be students and other teachers taught them and we brought them to the TC hallway and we did the lesson on you know, what we do when we go to the, the restroom and you know, how we handle ourselves and so forth. So it's really explicit teaching. There's a continuum of procedures for encouraging that expected behavior. So you teach the behavior and then you acknowledge the behavior, the positive behavior, when you see students doing what you want. And the research shows that acknowledging four or five acknowledgements to one reprimand or correction really changes behavior. That if you're heavy on the reprimand or correction, it doesn't really change behavior as well as the system does. Um, there's a, cons a continuation of procedures for discouraging rule violations, and then of course, procedures for ongoing data monitoring. So this is where this behavior piece of the dashboard really matters because you need to be able to, so these teams meet monthly in each school, right? So you have a middle school team that meets and an elementary team that meets and so forth. And then a few representatives from each team meet monthly district-wide to talk about how it's going district-wide. Well, when they meet in their individual school, they need to be able to look at the data to say, hmm, we seem to be having some difficulties on the playground. Let's look at the data. Lots of our incidents are happening on the playground. What do we need to do? Maybe we need to reteach the lesson about <clears throat> behavior on the playground. Maybe we need to um, better monitor what's happening so we can see which areas those things are happening, right? So it's really data driven in order to make those corrections in the environment. So, as I mentioned, we start off with the common areas and positive expectations and routines are taught and encouraged. They're actively supervised by all staff in the environment and we give pre-corrections and reminders and positive reinforcement, right? So, if I'm walking a group of kids to the lunchroom and they're kind of younger kids, I might say, oh, Margaret, that's a nice job you're doing staying in line because Deb might not be. And I'm to <laughs> Probably <do> not. <laughs> that is absolutely true. Or, <laughs> I might use a reminder and say, Deb, do you remember how we're supposed to walk to the lunchroom? You don't mind that. No. <laughs> so you're trying to positively reinforce instead of saying, get back to the line. This chart shows um, an expectation matrix. This is the actual expectation matrix for the Walterville and Templeton schools. You have the natural context, which is the top, classroom, cafeteria, bathroom, hallway, or stairway, playground, and bus. They chose those as areas they wanted to focus on. And then they have the school-wide expectations down the side and their four areas are be safe, be respectful, be responsible, and be a learner. And they delineated in each of those environments the behavior examples, what that looks like. So the social skill might be be respectful. Well, what is the behavior example in the cafeteria for be respectful? What is the behavior example for on the bus be respectful, right? And that's what the lessons are based off of. So these are posted not in this um, busy format, right? They're posted individually in the cafeteria, what those look like. On the, in the hallway, as you walk around the building, you'll see them. And it's very clear to students, it's very clear to staff. It, ha it really promotes a lot of consistency among staff, which is really wonderful. It also um, helps with that idea of the positive environment and climate because the staff, these are phrased in positive ways and the staff have common language to use. So then this is a piece I also wanted to just share with you quickly because um, this is like a self-reflection for the adults in the building, right? Did I have at least four to positive to one negative? Did I move throughout the area I was supervising? 
If there's trouble in the cafeteria because we're having some behaviors, well, am I just standing at the front or am I moving around in the cafeteria? Do I scan the area I'm supervising? I'm not going to read them all, but you can see mm -hmm. it's a self-assessment for the person, the adult in the environment, to see, you know, did I positively, positively acknowledge different students for their behavior, right? Just as reminders for them. Then we have classroom PBIS. So within this system, we're going to maintain our, um, our social skills down the side, be respectful, be safe, and so forth, but we're going to interpret them for the classroom. So classroom expectations are also taught and encouraged. There are routines in the classrooms. We try to maintain a higher ratio of positive interactions to negative promote active supervision and educate staff on what active supervision looks like and so forth. Um, the example I have here isn't our example, it's an example I have from uh, I'm on the PowerPoint because each classroom would have a different um, set of these, right? So they're flipped, right? So the social skill is on the top instead of on the left, but that's okay. So the social skill in this classroom example the social skills are respect others, respect property, respect self. And in the classroom, this teacher was important, was um, felt it was important to have these expectations in the context of morning meeting, homework, transitions. How do we ask for help when we need assistance? How do we do independent work? How do we promise help? Teachers could think of different contexts within their classroom that are important. And of course, those would vary by grade level. And then give positive examples of how to handle that. Do, do all teachers have a morning meeting? No. No. They don't. That's why this is an example, mm -hmm. not necessarily one of our teachers. A lot of elementary classrooms have a morning meeting, and that's something we're going to talk about with our instructional practices team. Um, we've had a hard time with the snow. We're going to meet again in March, and that's one of the things on the, on the agenda. And a, thoughts of it coming up to the middle school? So, um, this instructional uh, practices committee that I've been working with has been really one of the highlights of my work here, and I really um, appreciate the, um, the conversations that we're having with teachers and administrators about instruction, and it really has come down a lot, come down to um, positive culture, safety, trust between adults, between adults and kids, and so forth, right? So how do you promote that? So um, morning meeting is a practice of responsive classroom, mm -hmm. and there are some opportunities for some teachers to take a four-day training on responsive classroom. They don't know this yet, but if they watch the video, they will. Um, and there are trainings for elementary and trainings for middle. So, you know, we'll, we'll start by seeding the ground a little bit with, you know, some folks at each level, hopefully, that will um, take advantage of that mm -hmm. ability for them to do that. It's in the summer, so it's going to limit, um, you know, who can participate, vacations, and so forth. But, but morning meeting is a big part of that, and you can definitely have morning meeting in middle school. I would think it would be advantageous in a Absolutely. lot of cases, especially for kids that age. I just remember from yeah. experience, yeah. Absolutely, and it's hard because I'm, I come from a middle school background, and I can hear my own self as a middle school teacher saying, I have so much content to get through. I don't have time for that, mm -hmm. right? But I know that I don't have time not to do that because if I pay the, dip, you know, put the right. Then you get their attention. on that practice, I think mean, it's going to pay dividends for me in the learning that takes place in that classroom. Exactly. Yeah. So Thank this, you. You're welcome. So this is an example of classroom expectations, and then this is another checklist for classroom management practices. Have I arranged my classroom to minimize crowding and distraction? You know, if you have a classroom that's pretty crowded with lots of distractions, mm -hmm. you're going to have more behavior incidents. So, you know, how am I managing the environment? Is there structure and predictability and so forth? And you can look through those to see the kinds of things we're talking about with teachers. And Dr. Cassidy mentioned um, this idea of different tiers, right? Everything we've talked about so far has really been in this green zone of tier one. All students receive this. Um, 
preventive model with classroom systems and teaching. But of course, not every student is going to be successful with that alone, and some students will need additional supports or interventions, right? So some students might need secondary prevention measures, they might need specialized groups, we might need to have some systems in place for students who are at risk or having difficult behaviors. And then very few systems will be in this like tier three where they need um, individualized systems and they have high risk behavior, right? So we focus this year a lot on the green to lay that environment. I remember one of the superintendents out west who was implementing PBIS was working with a consultant and the consultant said, I, I'm not even going to talk to you about tier two and three because you have to nail tier one. Tier one is where you, you know, very bread and butter is. You really need to, to start that. But of course we have to deal with um, students who might need additional supports or corrections. And PBIS does not mean students don't have consequences for, behave, for behaviors right. that are not acceptable. We're trying to prevent as many unacceptable behaviors as possible, but sometimes we have unacceptable behaviors. So this is my last slide, that when problem behaviors occur, there are behavior management guidelines. And in our behavior um, data, on the data um, dashboard, there are different um, reporting systems for classroom-managed behavior and office-managed behavior. So, there are, or I should say staff managed, right? So, staff have certain tools in their toolbox, what they can do um, if students are not doing the right thing and how they correct that and, you know, and so forth. And then sometimes it rises to an office managed behavior. So, I know that was a lot in a nutshell. I did as I guess to shrink it. Was there an outreach to parents about this, that this is what we were going to do in our classrooms to hopefully get some buy-in from them? Not yet? Not really, not okay. yet. So we're getting our, our tier ones in place, but we can definitely layer that in. That would be a good um, next step. I know that at some of the open houses it was talked about and so forth, but it would be nice to have a, you know, maybe a parent night where people who are interested could learn about I it. I'm a caregiver for grandkids, and this is a good, you know, looking at the checklist, I'm saying, okay, Let's be more positive, not necessarily yeah. stop doing that. Let's say, well, how do we? So thank you. <laughs> so there's been different, I would say there hasn't been a systematic approach to that yet, but there have been pockets of communication, especially through newsletters. Yeah, the newsletters are fabulous. They are. Um, Which I, I have to think, I, I remember seeing, I think they went out in the newsletters. I do, but I'm, I'll, have to, I'll have to double check that. You see, there's, there's, uh, we've definitely seen PBIS, yeah. you know, and I know um, Mrs. Wheeler came in and, and wanted to publicly thank a lot of the, the people who've contributed. How does this then work with rewarding behavior? Because there is that piece. Right. I know that we've got some box that things are the yellow, right. and it's different for different yeah. levels of how things That's are done. Right. So. so that um, probably goes back to um, this slide where there's a continuum of procedures for encouraging expected behavior, right? So that continuum could be, um, you know, we start with teaching the expected behavior. We model the expected behavior. We verbally recognize when students are doing the right thing. But we also have extrinsic motivators, especially for the younger kids, um, actually really all the way through, um, different buildings have different things. So Phillipson has coins, and Templeton has emojis, and BES has emojis, and the kids, you know, it's a little square of paper with an emoji, but it's, they love it. So if you're doing a really good job, it's you. you get emojis, and the kids, they just gobble it up. Mm -hmm. And they put them in the classroom bucket, and then when the bucket's full, they get to put it in the school bucket. You know, it's like there's all these systems. They get um, rewards for certain things. I know they had a sledding party at Phillipston, and then, you know, so as a community, they're getting rewards. Um, they're used also, though, not only for encouraging good behavior, but for discouraging bad behavior, right? Which is bad, but in a 
inappropriate mm -hmm. behavior, right? So if I'm a kid who's, you know, always nudging the next kid in line, right? I'm all, I just can't keep my hands to myself, and I'm just always nudging and tapping it, right? That teacher or principal is going to be on the lookout, and that one minute that you're not nudging somebody, they're going to say, oh, great job, Kate. Keeping your hands to yourself, right? So now I'm like, oh. <laughs> she noticed me. <laughs> she noticed me because yeah. I did the right thing, right? That's the whole point. Yeah. I'm trying to notice kids for doing the right thing. So it doesn't set kids up against each other. It really encourages all the kids to, mm -hmm. to behave in a positive way. That's great. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and, I, I, and going to, you know, using the checklist, I think whatever communication we can do with parents um, to have the consistent form of positive behavior yeah. um, routines that could be done at home becomes, you know, I, I, I just remember, you know, reading somewhere when I, my kids were little, you know, well, don't do that. Didn't you mean to say, you know, instead of telling them, don't you, right? Um, you know, and then they would start with me and mom, didn't you mean to say that I could do that? You know, so <laughs> they turned it around really quickly. But, but I think it, it's nice that, you know, as our worlds become tighter and tighter with home to share that information um, and, and help I will, everyone. I will look at what the buildings have done and then see, you know, what our next steps could be. Um, this is a research, really highly research-based system and it's everywhere. It's in so many different schools. <clears throat> I have a grand niece in Rhode Island and she's in kindergarten this year. And her mom, who's my niece, said, Oh, you know, so and so she her daughter came home and she had some whatever and no and they said, Oh, they must be doing PBIS. And she's like, What? And then of course a few weeks go by and she's like, You're right, they they're doing PBIS. <laughs> because I just knew from mm -hmm. how she described, you know, the scenario with as a young child, so. That's great. That's great. Yeah, I think it's a wonderful yeah. system. Thank you. Thank you for the ideas and the help. <laughs> and just a, a quick comment, um, the program of studies, I know we're not quite ready yet to present that to the committee, so at our, whatever our next meeting will be, we will have those and an update on that. Will so we do that, that we at Academic? Um, actually, that probably would be a, a good idea to present it ac Academic first. Uh, the first Monday of March, whatever that one is, and then we can bring it to the committee and you know, at least get a copy out for everybody so hopefully we can get that approved because I know the high school will be anxious to um, get their, their firm course selections done. So thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, subcommittee reports. Academic, administrative. Um, we, as a committee of the whole, had assigned the two, 2019 Superintendent goals and indicators. I know at our last meeting um, we had other things, and I think Mrs. Triple, you weren't there, if I remember. Yeah, correctly. Um, so we will talk about that at our next meeting and bring back information. Um, anything else that you wanted to add from? No, I think what yeah. you've heard is the result of the academic subcommittee. Great. Um, finance, we've already discussed that. Facilities, have we had a facilities meeting? Yes. yes we have. Are you? Did they make you chair of that committee? No. <laughs> Not yet. Soon. Yeah. No. Really soon. The new guy always gets stuck with it. Know. <laughs> just, just wanted to warn you. So um, I actually forget uh, what was it. What I was going to say. Day, no, I forget what day it was. <laughs> um, so, but anyway, so we did meet, and um, um, one of the things we did discuss was the uh, evacuation of the Baldwin School once in the Temple of the Sun so, uh, opens. Mm -hmm. uh, the Temple, the town of Temple, is looking for a date for us to withdraw from there. Um, uh, we, at some point, the committee will have to hold a vote on what day we determine we're going to need to do that. Um, we're committed to at least the end of the school, the academic year, June 30th. Um, uh, How I got to July. But we're not sure on that yet. We're still, yeah. we're still uh, pushing some things around. Um, presently, Rick is uh, Rick Moulton is looking. Uh, he's uh, getting boxes and stuff and preparing to move. Um, um, Ed Tech. Um, at some point, they will be going through. Uh, that's the, the, that building will be taking a bunch of the te technology down where we can reuse in other places. Um, <laughs> Yep, um, let's see, said, uh, so also um, the principals from the other schools will be going through the edge to look at some of the furniture, anything that we can reuse um, in 
some of the other buildings with the exception of the new school, which will only be getting the new FF&E furniture. We're not going to let our other principals go, go through there to clean things. Yes, exactly. Again, there is limited, we have limited storage, so it's any of the stuff that is not of value will be going on to surplus. Um, one of the things that we are uh, looking at will be, um, although we want to get out of the, get out of there, um, there may be some additional costs in delaying it because of the alarm company and things like that. So we're looking at that just to see if um, um, if it would be beneficial to get out of there. We just want to make sure we allow ourselves some, some enough time. Um, the, one of the other thing we, we talked about a bunch of the building improvements and capital um, operating things. Um, in, Unless the committee wants me to go through each one of them, I'm not going to do that. No, actually, I think what might be nice, though, is maybe um, at one of our upcoming meetings, just kind of give us, I know you used to get a report at, at sure. some point towards the end of the year to say, hey, these are the things that we need to um, focus on and or get on the docket for upcoming budget cycles. So that'd be good. We'll get Rick to do that. Yeah, perfect. He doesn't do anything, right? <laughs> <laughs> anything else? <laughs> Just I don't think so. I think we're good. Okay. <laughs> it's a good meeting. Yes. Good yeah. Meeting. No. Thank you. Uh, a policy. I'll turn it over to Mrs. Kozel. Our favorite. Okay. Here we go. Last month I brought uh, before you many motions for um, first reading, and some of those were for deletion. We have 10 items that we'd like deleted JID, which is students of legal age, JLCCA which deals with students with HIV AIDS, JLCE proposed for deletion because it's a first aid and emergency medical care, JLCEZ, athletic coaches, JLF, reporting child abuse and child protection, JLIF, sex offender registry notification, JM, student awards, honors and scholarships, JO, employment of students, JRA-R, student records, and JRC, release of information on students. Those are all for deletion. Then we have some updates and some new ones. This is again, second reading. JLC was, is a proposed update for student health services, and we are just putting in a section recommended by MASC. JLCA is new. This is physical examinations of students, physical examin and it's, double, it's twice, sorry. And it sets policy for student physicals and testing as per law and regulations. JLCC is proposed new. This is communicable dis diseases. It sets policy on treatment of these diseases in the schools. JLD is proposed new guidance program, sets policy for the purpose of our guidance program. So I would like to entertain a motion to accept these as second readings. In favor? Any, any comments? No, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Took me many meetings to get that. No, no comments. Now no we comments. Say. Okay. <laughs> all in favor? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I don't know if I should say it or yeah, if you should opposed, say it. Opposed, no abstain, yeah. so it was unanimous. Oh, okay. I left a few off the back. Sorry. Okay, now we have some first readings. And the first reading is, oh, and that finishes up our section J, which I'd like to yes. say yes. thank you very much. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. And we did have one more proposed new, sets policy for student photographs. But anyway, first reading is IB, proposed update, academic freedom, change the reference from state to commonwealth. IHAI, proposed update, occupational education, updates policy to include pre-K as part of the policy. Mm -hmm. IHAMA is new, parental notification relative to sex education. This is a new policy recommended by MASC and it sets policy for notification to parents. IHB is an update, special instructional programs and accommodations, programs for children with special needs. New policy sets district policy for special needs programs and accommodations. IHBF is an update, homebound instruction. It updates the policy to only include policy statement on homebound instruction and removes all procedural information. JJJ proposed for deletion, 
extracurricular activity eligible, eligibility. MASC does not have this policy in their guides. So we are deleting. Actually, no, we were updating that. I'm sorry. We're updating it? We're updating it, not deleting it. Oh, we may want to keep this, yes, yes. Yeah. and update and the language. Update I forgot them. that. That's yes, excuse me. I'm sorry. So we're going to get rid of the deletion. Yes, that's going to update. All right, and we have one more JP. It's a new proposed new student gifts and solicitations, and this sets policy for student gifts and solicitations. And I would entertain a motion to set these up for first reading. So moved. Seconded. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. And we will be going over the wellness policy at our next meeting, which I believe is the 25th of this month. And we that's going to take a while, I'm sure. So I will text you about sending it to yes. us. Thank you. Okay. Um, Long-term planning? Nothing at this time. Uh, Templeton Elementary. Smooth sailing. Smooth sailing. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Um, Phillipston Elementary. Um, I'll give a quick update on that. Um, I have reached out to the select board in Phillipston to have a member formally appointed to the PMES building committee. Uh, the select board, I believe, will have it on the next agenda. And Jeff, you were the, the name, of course, that I submitted. Um, so you'll be a, a, there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, was, so, yeah. <laughs> so you'll be the full-fledged member of the PMES building committee um, as a. Representative for the school committee. Have we been given an update on that? Because there were some yeah. that wasn't pretty We we have, I think, and that'll be the second piece. Is there any? I know that there's been some activity now, um, so I don't know if you want to give us an update as to the last meeting or two that's happened, because I know that's where most of the uh, activities. We're, we're meeting actually more frequently. We met last week. We're meeting the week after vacation. Um, the goal is to come up with sort of an amount of money for the next step in the process to put on the town meeting for the people. But right now, where we, we need to contact a fire protection engineer because the building, no matter what construction or renovation gets done, code says it needs a sprinkler system. Phillipston does not have town water with pressure to supply a sprinkler system, so we need a fire protection engineer to come in and say where you need it and how your system can work with a well. So that is what they're in the process of doing now, is looking for one of them, <coughs> talking to them, seeing about a consulting fee, having them come to a meeting, explain. So the warrant would probably be to get an estimate on a price to go out to bid to have a consultant draw up some sort of a plan to see what we're up against. Does that answer your question? <laughs> Part of it, yeah. I know there's been a lot of articles recently about many different things. Um, so, and you said you meet again the week, week after, after vacation? vacation yeah. Right. Okay. All right, well, we're looking forward to another update and actually Jeff will be there. You can okay. hand that off to him to update. <laughs> I don't think he gets voted in until the day after the meeting. Oh, she got that checked out. <laughs> don't blame All right. Um, correspondence, there was none to review when we put the agenda together. I'm assuming nothing else came, nothing had come in. And the note, upcoming meetings, obviously we've changed that. So the next meeting will be our preliminary budget hearing on February 27th yep. at 6 o'clock here in the Kiva. Um, I believe that is everything for our regular agenda. We will be going into executive session for reason number three to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining with the UFCW and the meeting will not return to open session immediately following. I would entertain a motion uh, for that reason to go into executive session. So moved. I have a motion to have a second. Second. And a second. Mr. Mason? Aye. Mrs. Matson? Yes. Mrs. Robichaud? Yes. Mrs. Kojan? Yes. Mrs. Triplo? Yes. Mrs. Joyner? Yes. Mr. Marks? Yes. Ms. Hughes says yes. Unanimous. <coughs> so I thank everyone for coming. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.